Okay, thank you very much for coming to our second blockchain pitch up here in Faduz. Uh, the pitch up is the offspring from the big meetup we do uh, about every two months. And this is the second pitch up we do, the last one we did, I think, three or four, five months ago. Um, yeah, the, the idea was to give uh, young uh, projects the chance to pitch their projects to an audience. And uh, thank you very much. This is an audience. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, we have some uh, sponsors as well. It's Eternity Blockchain. It's one of the oldest uh, blockchain projects in Liechtenstein and also the biggest one so far. Um, we have uh, one of, the, of uh, Black Blockchain in the jury as well. It's uh, Mattia Martinez. And um, yeah, he will also chat about the project. And um, Blockchain Bureau, we have Philip Büchel. Um, he's an expert in Bitcoin and blockchain. He has his own advisory office in Ruckel. Um, Corledger, I'm not sure if someone is here from Corledger, but I can tell you they are building a, a project above blockchains. Uh, they can communicate with various uh, blockchains and it's a trading platform, uh, more or less, but it's, it's a very powerful tool. We have Ganten Group, that's the company where I am I'm from. We are basically a corporate services company, which is a bit specializing also in blockchain and eventually ICO advice. Um, Negele Rechtsanwälte, that's Thomas Negele, he is the best known lawyer in the space of blockchain in Liechtenstein. And, um, but he's not here. But thank you. Um, Gastner Personalberatung, Vanessa somewhere. Not yet. Um, they are. Um, uh, where is she? Oh, I haven't seen her. Okay, she's not here. But um, her company provides jobs in the crypto space. Also, not only, but also. Our today's live stream is provided by Crypto Media. You see the camera over there. Everyone who does not want to be on the live stream, please avoid the camera or. <laughs> leave the building. Um, okay. Let's see what we have today. We have three projects. One of them is uh, called Vault Security, and I read from their paper. Vault is the worldwide first global... I'm translating this, so... Please excuse me, it's in German here. Vault is the worldwide first global network that uses blockchain technology to register assets like lost or stolen items and to identify them. The network is, um, is open for every user that wants to secure or identify assets on the blockchain. Okay, that's the first project. Um, sorry. Then we have uh, Hit Foundation. Let me just grab the paper. I will read this because otherwise I, I get lost. Um, health info... Okay, uh, the proposition of uh, the HIT Foundation is the Health Information Traceability Foundation is the proposition of a distributed and autonomous marketplace for health information that powers a global data-driven healthcare ecosystem. So that's a, that's a big issue um, that you know where your health data is kept and that it's not uh, mixed up and messed up with. Okay, that's the second project and the Third project and last one is Talkit. Talkit uses the blockchain, uses blockchain e-wallets for a world in which everyone has access to cheap Vox um, prepaid calling um, 
Ja, Guthaben. <laughs> no, uh, credits, ja. Yeah. Um, only 29% of 5 billion mobile phones in the world have high-speed 4G internet and Talkit uh, is able by his uh, technology to also provide this on 2G. So it's a, a highly sophisticated technology. Okay, uh, very exciting projects I think. We first wanted to do uh, five projects but then uh, it was quite uh, difficult um, to select them and we also had some who abandoned their their place so three is very nice so we have enough time for questions afterwards and also for the talk of our special guest that will be Robbie Schwertner he's quite uh, well known in the in the crypto space at least in in Europe and I suppose also uh, worldwide um, he's a very skilled speaker and yeah, he's called Crypto Robbie uh, on the uh, social medias. So if you want to look him up afterwards, this is his credentials over there. Okay, um, after Robbie's speech, uh, during which one we will count the votes, um, we will have the award ceremony. We have here a self-made uh, award, which will then be engraved afterwards. So the projects cannot take it home immediately we'll have to wait a little bit and we will also have time maybe to have a small panel discussion between the speakers uh, Robbie and maybe some people from the jury um, in the end as usual a nice networking apparel with warm food and drinks the drinks are cold by the way and now maybe also the the jury, uh, two I have already mentioned. On top we have Seb Sebastian Kaduf from Epiphany. He's an IT expert and um, blockchain uh, evangelist. I don't know what that is, but probably he is. Volkmar Ritter, he's an IT expert. He uh, advises banks in implementation of IT systems. Philipp Büchler mentioned already, Ralf Wanger is another lawyer. He's uh, closely working with me also. Um, he's from Batliner Wanger Batliner, uh, the biggest commercial law firm in Liechtenstein. And Matthias Mars Martinez from Eternity, I mentioned already before. Okay, I just have as an idea some uh, recent developments uh, in the crypto space of last months. Um, you have maybe heard that Google finally lifted the ban for crypto advertising, so probably they're running out of money. And um, another reason they say they have already bought enough projects so that they can let the others do advertising again. <laughs> okay, uh, Bitman that's the biggest uh, producer of ASIC miners in the world is planning an ICO. It has already a 75% market share um, but funny enough they reported a loss um, recently but no one knows really what's going on there. Um, a very interesting project in Switzerland, SIBA, they raised 100 million for a crypto bank in Switzerland. Um, yeah they are uh, soon opening, hopefully. So that's a good sign for adoption and in, in Switzerland and also a good sign for Liechtenstein. It's some competition, but there is so much uh, business in the space that I don't think that won't, will be a problem. Um, as always, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to say that cryptocurrencies are not for criminals. So Europol said last week or during the last months that there were no evidence that there is any connection between Bitcoin and terrorism financing. Coinbase, the, one of the biggest exchanges in the world, uh, plans to double its stuff. Um, they believe that by the next five years um, there will be one billion crypto clients in the world. So. Their word in God's ears. Um, 
And finally, there has been an ETF launch, not in the US, but in Canada. So many investors are waiting for that, um, a crypto ETF. I think it's mainly Bitcoin. Yeah, so these are the, the news of today. But I also want to say that all the propositions the, the projects are making are under a certain disclaimer. This is not financial advice. Don't buy anything you cannot afford or understand, please. Um, and if you still do that, tell no one <laughs> and don't complain. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a, a also very good news um, from our side. Um, I have started a project together with uh, Core Ledger, that was the company which is also a sponsor here. Um, this is like Panini on blockchain. So we have uh, non-fungible tokens which we use to secure um, pictures about the 300 year anniversary of Liechtenstein. So you can learn the history of Liechtenstein by collecting uh, the pictures in a mobile app. And yeah, once you have completed the album, uh, you get a, a physical printout, which we intend also to uh, make an asset on the trading platform. So can you afterwards trade the whole album? So if you are doing well, we hope that it's going up in price. There will be only limited numbers of everything here. You can register under bd300.li and yeah see what happens. It's, it will only start uh, in a couple of weeks or months because the anniversary is on the 23rd of January next year. Okay, um, we have also some prize money sponsors. Uh, it won't be huge, but Eternity is, uh, is giving something on top. And Arcatrust, that's a professional vault solution. Um, the prize money will be at least 500 francs. Um, we will see what the result of this, um, um, the commercial result of this event will be, and we may increase it a little bit. Um, the projects will also get some publicity in the newspapers for, uh, as included in the service. Okay, and maybe you have seen these uh, items here. So we are trying to uh, get uh, sponsors from other um, businesses. This is a particularly nice uh, one. These are uh, natural gemstones or, or minerals, uh, which are very beautiful. And I think they give a good contrast um, to what we are working on. So you see the nature and the nature, uh, funny enough, uh, produces um, crystals in perfect uh, um, mathematical geometry. If you look closely, this has all been produced by nature and it's partly um, very, very accurate geometry. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, this is uh, mineralienzentrum.ch. Uh, which are providing these minerals. You can, you can buy them, by the way, and this will, be, will have a positive effect on the price money. Okay, um, good. So then uh, let's come to the first project, uh, which is a world security. And maybe you want to introduce yourself. You have 10 minutes, and we have then five minutes to ask questions. If you don't dare to ask questions, you can also pass them on to one of the jury members. Okay, um, World mm -hmm. Security, it's your turn. Thank you very much, Klaus. Appreciate the time. Thank you very much for coming here and to listen to our company, which is Vault Security Systems AG. We are located in the US in two locations, as also in Zurich, which is our mother comp company or holding company. What is Vault Security Systems? What are we doing? Our brand, our product is iVault, which we trademark, obviously, worldwide. What is iVault? Okay, iVault is basically the first global network to use blockchain technology for registering and identifying lost or stolen items. It's open to everyone. Let's users register their items plus search for and identify their products if it gets lost or stolen, obviously. 
The goal for Vault is, first of all, creating a global database for registering reporting items, as I said before, offering a simple-to-use global search engine for lost and stolen items, and third but not least, uh, reducing the convertibility of value of stolen, for lost and stolen items, and this way impacting crime by minimizing it. Is there a market for iVault? Well, nearly three billion items gets lost or stolen every year on planet Earth. 2.9 million bicycles worldwide get stolen every year, which are five per minute. 15,000 laptops get lost every week on airports worldwide. We have 400 million lost and stolen items in the US, 100 million lost, items, lost or stolen items in Germany, and which is a pretty huge number, 7.1 million vehicles are stolen every year, which means 11 per minute. So I think this is a huge market, a huge scalable market where there is a problem. Why is there a problem? Quite simple. The crime rate is increasing right rapidly, especially theft crime. And the recovery rate is 1.2%. So I think our police forces, our insurance companies need a lot of help. And we believe we can do that help and can solve that problem. What is iVault? What is the need for it? Like I said before, there is no search, searchable international database in real time. The approach, create international search engine, safe storage through blockchain, which means once you did the KYC on our regular server platform, you have access to your blockchain. This is how it should be. Because once you have your items in your blockchain, only you know what you got in your blockchain, nobody else. Once it gets stolen or lost, then it will be added on the server, on the international database where everyone has access. So we're creating a community who everyone, where everyone works together to help lost or stolen items. The benefit is a bigger chance to recover property, insurance institutions looking for new innovations, and our police forces are struggling with 1.2% recovery rate, so they are overwhelmed, to say the least. The competition, there are few companies who have the same idea. We have a US patent pending right now. We are very confident that we get it granted by spring next year and internationalize it and expedite it very soon, worldwide. We have a very successful development team, affordable solution for fighting crime. Why iVault? Theft is today the most occurring crime. Uh, a criminal incident in the world and theft crime is increasing rapidly, as you know. Recovery rate, as I said before, is 1.2%. iVault offers the worldwide community access to something what was not possible in the past. And since there's a huge scalable market for this product, our biggest partners are insurance institutions as also the police forces. We are working already with the IPA, International Police Association, we talked already to big insurance companies. They love the idea, but I come to that a little bit later. Uh, also, you can buy on our iVault website um, gadgets like cameras, GPS trackers, sensors, locks, or any kind of gadget you need to secure your home, your laptop, whatever you have, your bicycle, and so on. Who is the iVault team? Me as the CEO. Well, you can read more about it in the white paper if you're interested, because that would take a little bit longer. Um, we have a, a nice team uh, with really good professionals in the security uh, side as also in the marketing side. We have two new members we just onboarded recently, uh, Lota Rentschler, who is a chief marketing officer, award-winning international chief marketing officer uh, with 25 plus years of experience working for companies like Pro7, Sat1, Sat1, Bacardi, Gameforge, Canon, Mercedes-Benz, Biosdorf, DHL, to name a few. And also we added our new CIO who is also here, Bora Alkunjewahir, 
sorry. He is actually a blockchain technology and uh, innovation expert. He's lecturing in the university, uh, also in St. Daniel and Bern. Um, he is also an author of many publications about blockchain and innovation. And I will, will be a program case in different universities in Switzerland, as also in Germany and in the United States. So that's very interesting this way. More and more articles will be written about our project. Uh, the developer team has a phenomenal reference, as you can see, to name a few, Allianz, Generali, Zurich, Hamburger Insurance, that are our developers. It's very important that you have developers and a lot of Turkish insurance companies, as you can see. It's very important that you have developers who are in the insure tech business because our product is nothing else than an insure tech product. You know, so in order to have the best people, we need or the best product, we need the best developers. And we think with this kind of references, we pretty hit the dot. Where are we today? Our web presence, WallSecurity.io, is already online. Our MVP one is ready for Android as we speak. And I will that app uh, is our application, which is going to be on Android now on Apple very soon, iOS you call it, and our web presence is going to be on the 15th of October, I would say, so plus minus plus, plus minus three days. Um, the web shop will be integrated soon, and the GPA, the, the interesting part is we have GPS trackers which self charging capabilities in development. What we put in our patent, and that's I think very interesting, you know that every cat or dog has a chip. And that chip, t chip tells you what race it is and who is the owner of the cat or the dog. What we are trying to do right now with our de development business um, partners to make a self-charging GPS tracker through kinetic energy, through heat. So if the animal runs, you know where it is through your app. It's very interesting. We have a US patent, as I said before. It's a provisional patent. But this patent covers a lot of those things which I told you. So it's really an extensive patent. And our developers are finishing all the patent work, I believe, in spring, upcoming year. And uh, once it is uh, granted, we will expedite it internationally. Uh, about our roadmap, as I said, we have the MVP1 ready as we speak. MVP2 will be ready. Uh, you can see it on the next page. Uh, in uh, November um, 2018, November, December, and that's when we have the ICO phase one. We are gonna be, have the iOS app ready in January 2019 and start the acquisition of institutional partners, insurances and police people where we worked and talked already as we speak. Uh, we have many marketing phases and we wanna make the rollout in June the ICO in June because until then we have a full, full functioning pro, uh, product. That means I want to make sure when we go on the market we have not only a full functioning product but at least one million users onboarded. That we are in the scaling part of this business. And I think in days like today where we see such a consolidated market and prices are going down that here it's very important that you have a lot of meat on your bone and not only come for bone and hope, make quick money and that's it. And just on a personal note, myself, I lived in the United States for over 12 years, two years in New York, worked at Wall Street. One minute. Well, I'm done in 30 seconds. Uh, after that, I moved in to Miami, Florida. When I relocated to Zurich, I put all my valuables. This is three Persian carpets, obviously I have a Persian name. Silk carpets over two generations. I got it from my parents. Uh, was in the storage as also a complete music studio, which I used in my free time, and some wooden statue. When I came back five years later, everything was gone from that storage. And I wished back then that I had all the serial numbers of my articles on a blockchain to tell that it's lost. So today I'm happy to introduce you to a product like that. And I believe when we build a community together, we can make this world a better place. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you.
Okay, we have now time, five minutes um, for questions from the jury and also from the audience while the technical staff is being prepared for the next speaker. Um, one question regarding the whole process. I'm registering my products on your blockchain first. My phone, for instance. First you have to go, thank you for your question. First you have to go on the, through the KYC protocol. Okay. Once we know it's you, mm -hmm. and if you have the ID, we give you the possibility to put on your own blockchain, your iPhone, whatever is valuable to you. And then it gets stolen, unfortunately. And then I publish it on your... Once, you hit, once it gets stolen, you hit the button stolen, and then it comes automatically on our server, but not your name. Mm -hmm. Your name is not going to be accessible for anyone. It's only going to be that iPhone, for instance, if mm -hmm. that serial number is gone. Mm -hmm. And this way, the people can look through an international search engine, like Google, but this is for lost or stolen iPhone. Yeah. Of the yeah. eyeball, put in the seal number, oops, it's stolen in Liechtenstein, or look at here. For instance, that's an example. And who has an incentive to bring stolen items to your platform? I don't see that. I mean, it's stolen by someone. He won't give it away. And, and, and you think he puts the stolen item on our blockchain? No, no I, don't, I don't think so. Because he's, he stole it and he just uses it, okay. for instance. Okay, if someone steals it, you know, and he keeps, keeps it for himself, then it's very hard. Okay. But as I, as I said before, we are preparing right now GPS trackers, which are so small, like a little piece of a fingernail. And you can put them basically on the smartphones. We're working, we are looking forward to work with big institutions to put those self-charging GPS trackers in every electronic uh, machine. Then it's gonna be difficult because then you can track your machine. Even if they put the SIM card out and take off take it off from the from the from the network, it's still possible. Hmm? And there's always a finder's fee, you know, because how is the tokenization? If someone finds, for instance, let's take an example of a Rolex. If a Rolex, if, if there's a burglary and we see there's a lot of burglaries, a Rolex gets stolen. And most of the time, if they're still in Switzerland, they don't sell in Switzerland, they sell, they sell in Romania, in Bulgaria or somewhere else. This person who buys that watch want to make sure it's not stolen item because the latest once you put it to service, you then get your watch because it's stolen, it's registered as stolen with Rolex. So this way, they have the chance to go to the database and see it's stolen. They get a finder's fee, which is paid to, with token and so on and so forth. Yeah, next question. Um, can you explain what the business case is? How will you earn money with this project? Very good question. Everyone who's putting an item on the blockchain gets it the first three months for free. After that, a dollar per item a year, which is nothing, basically. Nobody fills a dollar. If you have four or five products, you don't pay five dollars at once. You pay the dollar for each item once it passed 12 months. But you will feel it. I will feel it through the masses. Okay. 100 million users, three items in average, 300 million revenue. Thank you. Um, what was your decision or why do you use a trust minimized platform? Um, because you're doing KYC, you know your customers. Um, what's the advantage if you compare it to a, like a traditional database that you also can decentralize that everyone has access that might be cheaper and faster even? Uh, what was your decision there? The, the decision was made to doing it through smart contracts because every, every time you can do a smart contract, everything is automated through an automated basis and you can generate a second market with the tokens. You know, because once the supply and demand raises, the demand raises, the supply gets less and the token value goes up. So this way, we want to make a system, a working system, where people can pay finder's fee, recovery fees with the tokens and also the membership fees with a token instead of a dollar. I mm -hmm. hope this answered your question. If not, I have my CIO here and he's more than happy to e explain to you everything in more in detail. Maybe one more uh, quick yeah. question. If uh, I see a bicycle and I am uh, going to uh, see the serial number and I'm going to register it before I steal it, would that be possible? Or That's a very KYC? good question. We went through all the scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, what happens, you know? Once you put things on your blockchain, 
we, we don't want to have access into your blockchain because you can put sex pictures on the blockchain. It's not our business. Once it gets stolen, then we have to do our due diligence. We want to see a receipt of you. And if you don't have a receipt, you have to sign a disclaimer that says, I'm the owner. And if I'm not the owner and lying, you will be punished by a political law. Did this answer your question? I'm more than happy. Thank you. Any more questions? One last question, if anyone has one. Please. Hi. Uh, so the token is ERC20, it sounds like. And right now, uh, yes. Where is its value derived? And do you have an ERC721 token for um, the assets? I think this question is perfect for uh, my friend and colleague, our member of the team. Please, can you answer this? <laughs> Thank you. I think it's the, it's the, the technology uh, side. Uh, the C oh, that's good. Cons uh, side. Cons we have an ERC20 token right now. We know that this our ERC20 token is on Ethereum, which is not that fast right now. You can do 20 transactions per second. And for a scalable product like that, they announced mm -hmm. already that by end of next year, you can make 100 to 200,000 transactions a second. So then we basically don't even need to migrate or migrate the system. But that's probably the answer for, for Gökhan. We have a chief technical officer who is right now lecturing at the university. I'm sorry, he's not here. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. That was brilliant, thank you. And now we have a HIT Foundation, Eduard Scheuer, who will present us his project. Okay, now we come to a totally different topic. It's healthcare, but I think it's important for all of you, even if you're young or old as I am, so healthcare is for all of us. So what we do is uh, we basically are matching those who are looking for health data, and this is a, quite a big market, with those who are having, uh, who can provide health data either from their record or they can actually produce new data. So, let's think. Okay, so health data. Health data has some tremendous problems nowadays. Uh, very often the health data is centralized. That means it sits in silos in the hospitals, insurances, pharma companies, very different places, and especially pharma companies are not sharing data. So the only person who can actually get access to all the data is you, uh, because legally you're the only one who can actually uh, pull all the data. But when you, the data sits in the silos, you, use uh, you lose control over your data. It's basically, uh, once you give consent, that's for example, it's being used for research, uh, they do whatever they want with the data. So even if it's anonymized, it's the, if it's DNA, you know how much anonymization is worth. The big problem nowadays is uh, I'm only interested in my health data when I'm sick. Thank God, most of the time I'm healthy, so I don't care about my health data. And then you get sick and you say, oh, sh I should have uh, documented all my uh, health files, digitized my data, but now it's too late. So what we actually have to have is an incentive for everybody to digitize their data even when they are, they are healthy. So that's what we are going to do with our token. And health data, I already indicated it's a big market, uh, but the problem for the ROS of this world is that they have to pay a lot of money and spend a lot of time to get access to the people. And the ideal world would be I define who I want to have as a data giver, as a participant in research. Uh, and then uh, this person get a request, uh, here is an opportunity to earn tokens. Would you be able to participate? Paid? Would you are willing to participate? And then that would be the ideal world to get easy access and fast access to people who are willing to participate in research. So health data, most of you think health data is only what sits in your health record, but that's not true. Health record is just one uh, type of medical data. 
When you make a doctor's appointment, that's considered health data. Your activity level is considered health data. Uh, what you actually buy in the grocery store is health data because once you merge all that kind of data together, the picture is getting very interesting because, for example, if Micro knows what you bought and then you go to the Micro uh, Health Center, then this kind of interesting data. So um, there's a wide continuum of health data. It's not only the record and on the other end of the continuum is like the DNA data. That's probably the most expensive kind of data that we're talking uh, right now. So what is the market that we're talking about? It's huge. The data, digitized data market is very big. If it's 536 billion in the next 10 years, I don't know. But we know, uh, we see that each year we have a lot of uh, investments in that area. Uh, Roche bought flat iron for two billion beginning of this year. But at the same time, we have a lot of people, actually half of this world's population who cannot afford even the essential care uh, in healthcare. So our project is giving those people also the opportunity with their data to earn tokens, which they then can spend to uh, buy healthcare data, uh, health services. This is the token economy behind the whole, sorry, behind the whole system is that we assume that the individual is actually interested in acquiring tokens, which they then can uh, exchange uh, token exchanges or they can actually buy uh, services. But how does the individual get tokens? There must be somebody or a company that's interested in the health data and they actually pay the individual to uh, give the data and everything is governed by a smart contract. Actually, we are not on Ethereum, we are on NEM uh, due to uh, scalability reasons. Uh, this is the token economy. In the interest of time, I cut that short. So what we actually do, how it works, is the app that's going to be launched in two weeks. Uh, and the upper right, you see the information seeker can actually create a query, which is then written on the blockchain. And my personal app reads the blockchain, so there's no connection between those two parties right now. And there's my metadata, for example, when I'm a diabetic, I'm slightly overweight, over 50, I live in Liechtenstein, take a certain medication, and the information seeker is actually looking for that kind of person, monitoring their blood glucose level for one month, and then receiving, for example, uh, the token equivalent of $100. Are you willing to uh, participate in that research or not? So. Once I decide to participate, there is a connection made, so I'm guided off-chain to a place where I uh, provide the data, or where I can provide the data. So it's very important to understand that we don't deal with data. We are just a matchmaker, because as soon as we start dealing with health data, we are subject to all the data protection guys in this world. And if you look at those healthcare and blockchain projects out there, they run afoul of GDPR and so on. They will have a big problem. And that's why we choose not to have any data ourselves. We're just uh, the matchmaker and the person who participates or gives the data can either directly enter the data in a questionnaire or uh, they can actually give access or send data from their Apple Health or from the health record like Evita in Switzerland or Vivi now in Germany. Those are actually partners we are talking to. And right now the data goes directly to the seeker, but we are working on oracles that actually where you provide the data and the data never goes directly to the information seeker itself. So an oracle can also be a pharmacy. For example, imagine a study on blood fats, on lipids, uh, where you could go to the pharmacy and then they draw your blood and this, the result from this hash 
is being sent to the information seeker. And once the proof of the delivery of the data is written on the blockchain, the smart contract is executed and the individual receives the agreed amount of tokens. Okay, I think I have to finish up. Uh, what's the What's the business model behind it? As I already said, there are a lot of people, companies, looking uh, for data and their problem is access to those people who can provide data. So the network size is very important to the business model, to the success of the business model. We actually pay everybody for making himself visible to the system or reachable in the system. Uh, the first one gets more token than the everybody after him and uh, we also have like a sharing model that you only not only buy tokens or have tokens and hope the tokens is rising in value you also get uh, we have an asset token where you can actually get share uh, of the transaction fees that are generated on the system so we have a tail of two tokens we have one payment and one utility token that's being used to pay the participants for uh, giving data that's traded or listed on the exchanges from uh, the first quarter next year on. And we have a second token in order to finance, to, to uh, expand and to operate uh, the platform which is being sold to investors and they get a share of the transaction fees that is generated on the system. So uh, we have uh, like two tokens and separate the utility payment from the asset token. So this is our team, we are quite uh, international, so our CTO is an ex-Google, an ex-Sun guy, and he left Google because he couldn't do any blockchain anymore there. And we also have the, uh, the president of the European Health Parliament as an advisor, and we are a foundation Zug, like the typical crypto foundation, and uh, as I said, we are starting in two weeks, uh, launching our app. Thank you very much. So, questions? Um, you said you are just a matchmaker of yes. the demand and supply side. <clears throat> so, but if I sell some kind of health data to any demand, Demanding party, it is, I'm paid with your token, and the p demanding party um, sets the price it is willing to pay. Yes, so there is no uh, objective uh, price for data. It's like the Mona Lisa. No, uh, you, it's just worth what somebody is willing to pay for the data. So, for example, you are rushed. You're looking for the cancer patient and you're willing to pay a hundred US dollars worth in tokens so you put that offer on the blockchain and that's what I understood okay you said you have a second token uh, which is an asset token right. a security token can right. you tell us um, the regulatory issues about that asset token so did you apply for a... Uh, yes, we have a FINMA on the action letter. So you went through FINMA yes, process yeah, already? Right, so right. how long did that take? Uh, that took from... We submitted end of January and then the new ruling came and then we made the mistake of uh, adding the new uh, information so we had uh, to start from scratch again. So we uh, received everything in May. But you, were, you did not get a no action letter, you did have to set up a prospectus. Well, since, it's, since it says if uh, whether or not you have to uh, make a prospectus uh, is not uh, enforced by FINMA because that's not the task of the FINMA. So our uh, lawyer uh, said that since we are a foundation and that everything is a donation and the whole contract that we have is so basically aversive that everybody who takes a risk uh, is not participating, that is uh, enough. So you were not 
not going to make money with with that. So it's going to, to everything is going to the foundation and used to build uh, the system and maintain the system. And so it's also a non for profit that's also in the statutes of the uh, uh, the bylaws of the foundation. Thanks for the presentation. It's a, uh, an interesting and rather complex uh, project. I read your uh, white paper. So the white paper is not uh, in tune with everything what I said because okay. we are revising it right now to, and also the web mm -hmm. website. My question is about the name blockchain. Um, right. so with all of the other blockchains, we know more or less what's going to happen in the future. Like Ethereum, Vitalik says what's going to happen. Uh, like Bitcoin doesn't change, basically very, um, uh, uh, very traditional or, or slow pace. And with NEM, my feeling is that we don't know much about. Um, can you, and I'm sure you have uh, looked into that and you have some opinion how NEM is going to develop in the future. Well, actually, we are directly funded by the, and supported by the NEM Foundation. We actually received uh, money from them to build our project. And also, we have technical developers from the NEM Foundation. So we are very close uh, with them and know, also know what the new uh, catapult protocol that's coming out will bring. And NEM is so he, around since 2015, so it's a very mature uh, system and it works. You can actually build use cases very easily on NEM, that's the big advantage. Of course, you have the business logic off-chain, which is, causes some problems, but in order to execute transfers uh, and also scale, uh, it's very good and it will even be better and you can also the messaging on the blockchain is personally I'm not a technical guy I'm a psychologist that's why token economy is very interesting to me but uh, I think our experience with that is that you can really develop very good on that platform yeah. can Ill, Ill people make more money well <laughs> yes I mean, the health data of very expensive treat around very expensive treatments, especially the outcome uh, of treatments with expensive medication, uh, is worth more money than like fitness data, of course. So that means, especially cancer patients, where the treatment is very, very expensive and uh, growth rates are just insane, what is being made on the back of very ill people. So of course, if somebody is interested in that data, uh, you make more, he's willing to pay more money. And especially in the future when we move to like an outcome-based reimbursement system where you as a pharma company or a treatment provider have to prove that your therapy was working, then you need that kind of data in order to get paid by the, the insurance. And last year we had the first cancer treatment in the US that's only uh, allowed by the F, uh, FDA because the agreement was between Novartis and the the insurance is that it only gets paid when um, when it's working. And the answer to your question is yes. Uh, the, the more sick you are, the more money you can make, unfortunately, or fortunately, if turning everything around, what's happening today. Okay, I think this is the five minutes is over. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, last but not least, Brian Collins from Talkit. He's a technical wizard. And I've met him before, so uh, looking forward to his uh, talk. So, great to meet you, Nant, given that I'm the token foreigner here tonight. Um, my name is Brian Collins, the CEO of Horizon Globex, GmbH, out of Zug. Um, here to present uh, the Talkit solution. We are a software business operating out of uh, Zug, Ireland and London. Uh, we generate and we program all our own uh, technologies and we have our own patents in Switzerland. Our technology in particular is addressing the need of people who are on 2G and 3G networks, as Klaus mentioned earlier, 
We have around 3.5 billion people on older style networks in Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia. These folks have never really been able to make telephone calls beyond uh, calling uh, through their cellular operators, which are usually very, very high in these locations, like uh, Nairobi and places like that, where we have all been very fortunate in Northern Europe and North America to be able to use Skype and Skype out and so on, um, because we have the bandwidth and we have credit cards and so on. So that's what our technology is for. It's a Swiss patent. It's already filed uh, in about 15 jurisdictions globally. Um, it works on the 2G and 3G networks. And we're looking to also address the need of the unbanked. And that's really where the blockchain comes in for us. In order to avail yourself of lower cost calls on the likes of Skype and Skype out, uh, you have to use your credit card to purchase those credits. Uh, now we're changing that with the blockchain. We're actually being able to deliver a voice call to you that you can pay for using the blockchain, which is a quite, a, quite a big step forward. And then the people who are obviously most disadvantaged here will be uh, unbanked people, um, 1.7 billion of them according to the uh, World Bank, um, and around 1.2 million or billion of whom have smartphones, believe it or not. So we see that as a really great opportunity, having unique technology in the space and addressing a, a proper need in the global economy using the blockchain to, to drive that innovation. Our system has to address or overcome the issue of Ethereum or any of the other blockchains on creating your identity on the blockchain, a public key, a private key, signing transactions, getting gas, all of those things that some of you may be familiar with and certainly familiar with the fact that it causes a lot of uh, difficulty for normal users. Those of you who don't have a blockchain account, you should try it. It's actually quite nerd central. It's quite difficult. So what we've done is we've invented a new way of doing that inside our own app. We will create your own blockchain presence for you. We create the wallet for you, we'll sign all your transactions in the app as you, we know who you are. So we are really looking at frictionless mass adoption, that's what we're really uh, going for here with this technology. And then when you're on the app and you buy uh, one of our uh, scratch cards, basically you then pay for your call credit using a scratch card. What does our scratch card look like? Well these have been printed right now in Mexico, they cost about 1.4 cent each. They have at the back of the card they have a hot foil which you just scratch off and behind it is a 16 digit number. That number then can be punched into the app to redeem call credit. It's really that simple. So the idea here is that you now don't need a credit card. You can avail of low cost calling that your local carrier sim simply won't give you. If you try and make an international call right now with Swisscom or whoever, you'll see that it's rather expensive to do so. The idea here is that on your smartphone now you can make low cost calls on these very poor networks where the products like Skype and uh, WhatsApp and so on for calls simply don't work because the networks themselves simply can't carry the, the bandwidth. So that's what we've invented and we now have a distribution model going forward and this is what our ICO is about. Our ICO is a Swiss reg registered ICO. We have a letter of no action already from FINMA. We've already received that at the end of August. It's a utility token uh, as per FINMA's uh, guidance. And so this whole system is actually ready to go and our ICO is really about funding its expansion. That's where our investor pitch comes from. It's what we're looking for uh, from your side as investors to look at rolling this service out throughout the, uh, throughout the world. And basically the market for this is about $140 billion is forecast for 2021 in voice over IP technologies that are available to us all. We all still make a lot of telephone calls. You know, Skype, WhatsApp, WeChat, Talk, and all the other line, they're not the holy grail. They, they work really well for all of us for when we can avail of free stuff, but you still on occasion we still need to make phone calls. So we're not trying to replace these things, we're not trying to say that they're bad, although they do track you. Um, we're basically saying there are other things that you can turn to, certainly in uh, underdeveloped economies. That's fundamentally what we're after. What's in it for our investor and why is it so important for us? Well, it's important that we have an orderly market for our technology and an orderly market for our investors. Our blockchain deliverables are actually quite unique in this space and this I think will excite some of you who are certainly into capital markets. We operate our own decentralized exchange. So we are an R&D center of course, we're on the university campus in Ireland and here in Switzerland. Um, we all, we've invented our own decentralized exchange which we uh, roll out. Our, Decentralized Exchange basically has its own order book, and I can put that up here. Do you can see that? This is a, a simple enough order book where we can, let me just cut this for a second. Can I see that? Yeah. Unfortunately I can't, there we go. So this is our current order book that we have live. What happens is that when you scratch off your scratch card, you will then redeem that uh, token on your app. 
Um, I can show you right now how that's going to look. So here's our app, as you can see on the screen. You tap the app, you have a phone, you can go in here and you see I have no credit. So right now I have a balance of zero in my system. And I'll go to my retail store, which is what we're doing here with our funding. This is a live product. This is not a minimum viable product. This is a live product. So we're up and running um, as per FinMEZ guidance on the utility. We then have our own order book, as I mentioned. So I can now, if you're an investor in our technology and you buy our tokens from our ICO, you can list our tokens at your desired ask. It's completely and entirely up to you. Let's say you invest 10,000 with us and you want to exit at 0 0.0057, we go in at that. So you want to exit at 177. If you buy our tokens at our discounted price of 60 cent, you've got a 300% return. If you buy them at $1, which is face value when all the low cost tokens have been consumed, uh, you'll be making a 77% return. Uh, here you can now set your expiration and we can set in our wallet, which is here. I can now, those of you who are familiar with the blockchain, I now have to go and sign this transaction to put it onto the blockchain. <coughs> it's signed and I submit it. This is now live. Welcome to the blockchain, everybody, just in case you haven't seen it before. So this is us now signing at a, in order to go onto the blockchain as you, the investor. It will now come onto the order book and sit there and wait for the best bid and all bids, every single bid on this stock exchange effectively, come from every time somebody scratches a scratch card. So our bid liquidity is guaranteed by the success of our product. It's very important to try and understand what that means. If I now go back to the order book, you can now see, here's my order for 10,000 tokens. And I now go back to my phone, I go into top up, I go back here. So when you buy one of our scratch cards, written on the back of it is how do I top up, I type in star one, two, three, hash. And there will have been a code on the back, which would be, in this case, 8147 6638 1607 This is me with my blockchain presence. My public key, my private key, everything is in my phone. I now hit submit. I now submit my request to the blockchain. It's my request has been submitted. I click OK. I now come back to my ask. So let's, for argument's sake, say there's a million people in Africa who've downloaded this app and bought a $5 scratch card from us and they scratch at 1 o'clock in the day, 2 o'clock in the day, 3 o'clock in the day and so on. All of those bids that come will now come in here and take your ask automatically. You've got nothing to do except say, I want a 77% return on this investment. You put your order onto our order book, and every time somebody scratches a scratch card belong to our system, we will honor your request. It's unique in the space, in my opinion. So that's why we created our own decentralized exchange, in order to create an environment where all of our investors and all of our users can coexist together and we're the technology glue between the two parties. We run the networks, of course, in the background. We run tele telecommunications infrastructures in the three continents. And so that's basically what we do at the moment. And we forecast our revenues on scratch cards for year one to be $2.5 million. In year two, 11.7, and year three, 25. And then basically a cumulative forecast of $83.1 million over a four-year term. So that's how much revenue is coming in. Our ICO is a $35 million ICO. Let's say you buy 10,000 tokens in that ICO, then you can exit as our scratch cards start hitting our network. You decide on your ask. We don't decide your ask. We don't, we don't do anything with, it, with that. The reason we do this is I want to avoid, as a, as a CEO and as somebody that's standing here in front of you telling you about this product, I want to avoid the fact that you create a token, buy a token, and then we go listed on one of these mega decentralized exchanges out there and then get crushed by heavy selling from advisors, investors, um, bad people, pump and dump merchants as they refer to. I want to take all that risk away because we have a unique, unique way of generating bid liquidity on our environment. So our app works, we know it works, it will serve us a great need in these communities and in fact we'll be able to pay back our investors uh, over time as we run through this network at your own desired uh, exit. Yep. So, it's 10 minutes. Okay, thanks. So our, our token, our ICO is, is 35 million. 
there's our financial model under there. Our no action letter has already been received. It's been run as a Swiss ICO. Uh, fiat contributions go to a Swiss bank. Uh, Ether contributions go to our escrow agent. Uh, it is a really compliant offer, and we're also offering it in, in America under Reg D 506C. So that's basically who, who we are. It's a talkit.io ICO. You can hop on, you can contribute as soon as you're ready. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I can't believe I got through an entire demo and a presentation in 10 minutes, just, just for the record. But anyway. Well done indeed, <laughs> and a very nice presentation. Thanks a lot for Thanks. that. Um, I was wondering beforehand how you're dealing with fees, because you have to um, pay gas in order to yeah. uh, transfer your VOX, and you came up with a rather clever uh, solution, at least for now. So you set up a mining operation that uh, mines ether at the moment with um, solar energy. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, which is really nice. And you're doing uh, 2.3 gigahashes per second at the mm -hmm. moment there. Uh, I did some calculations. That means you are getting 4.9 ether per month at the moment. But right, actually, and yeah. at uh, the gas prices we have at the moment, that means you can um, finance uh, around about 190 transfers per second at the moment. Now that depends. That's on gas transfers you're talking about. Yeah, so let me, let me just so my question would be, uh, what happens if you, um, have, because that will um, be going down obviously, and what happens if you, and you have some reserves obviously I guess, and what happens afterwards? Sure. So to, to address a couple of points. One is we generate our own ether from a carbon neutral mine. We don't really like the fact that we have to use so much energy to generate ether, so we built our own carbon neutral mine. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a fun place to be, but it rains a lot. It's in Ireland, so uh, it's not exactly Malta for our sunshine hours, but never mind. Um, it was an, it's very much an R&D centre. It pays the gas. Important, it doesn't pay the box token transfers. The tokens themselves, an individual in Nairobi walks into a store and hands $5 over to the shopkeeper at the 7-Eleven or the kiosk. That shopkeeper has purchased those cards from us up front. We actually have the cash already in the company as revenue. We already own that money. We've already purchased Ether, and for, depending if we're doing a forward contract or not, we'll either hold the Ether long ourselves, or we'll exchange the Ether live with an API, with dollar Ether on the day. We are, we, this is a wash trade for the company. So will you give me cash in Nairobi? We buy Ether from it immediately and exchange it for Vox. That's basically how we do it. But we do it by signing it here. So you have to sign it on, on the app because this is the user buying the Vox tokens. When you buy that Vox token, then we, we uh, burn that token, reducing the issue of not standing. So therefore, we give the investors that little bit of upside as well, in that every time someone scratches a scratch card, uh, we reduce our issue of not standing. So for us, we will need a, our five ether a month, let's say, generates, uh, how much gas do we need? We get a thousand transactions basically per ether, give or take, because um, it's a very efficient uh, contract, because it's just a transfer, effectively two transfers to 21,000 gas uh, executions, depending on the way price at the time. Um, and then we will do that execution. So we have plenty of finance, if you like, gas to pay our way, because the user has given us the $5 in Nairobi, we already have it, we paid for it, and we give it to the user for his transfer. So we don't need this user in Nairobi to draw, go find this magic coin from you know, a leprechaun or something, right? It doesn't exist for them. It's very difficult for people to find these tokens. So they, and they simply don't have bank accounts, right? So we supply it because they gave us the cash. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So we, I wanted to really try and make it as frictionless as possible for the user and the community in general. Can you tell us what your soft cap and what your hard cap is and what you will use uh, the money for exactly? Sure. sure, under Swiss regulations since February 18, soft caps are now kind of no-no. Uh, you're immediately uh, classified as a security token if you have a soft cap. So we have a, uh, some, uh, removed the soft cap uh, from guidance from the attorneys. Uh, hard cap is 35 million Swiss francs, or dollars, because they're about parity at the moment. It's really for uh, expansion, market expansion. Mexico's first, Guatemala, Costa Rica, because we've... But, but more or less marketing. Absolutely, Because yeah. you are ready. I mean, We're done. you don't need any yeah. money for development. No. As, as programming is done, you can always improve software. I'm sure there's a few software people sniggering here, but you can always improve software. Uh, you saw the iOS app, we have an Android app, of course, as well. And of course, the decentralized exchange itself has to operate as well on a core network. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I think your KYC thing is uh, on, on the phone. Yes. Uh, there is KYC process. It's very... Uh, 
It's Very a, nice, actually. We, we, because of the difficulty faced with, uh, with all of us, all parties here uh, presenting tonight, is the KYC part uh, is, is very unknown. We, we're doing our KYC here with a Swiss uh, SRO member. And we have a KYC app here that's compliant with the uh, Swiss mechanism. So this is a little off topic. Uh, but we had to build our own. The, the reason we had to build our own is that uh, one of these really just didn't exist properly, in my opinion. Um, so I can now collect all sorts of data here about myself and submit to a full ICO KYC process, which goes into a Swiss SRO member for them to review my data, where I got my money, all those things, so that the Swiss regulator is actually happy with our offering. Okay. Uh, one last question. Yes. Hello. I would Hi. like to ask you, what is the benefit for somebody who stays in Arusha or Shinyango or Nairobi or Dar es Salaam or else? What is the benefit for them who buys this $5 watcher, for example, as there is a perfect network? There, there is a perfect GSM network. What is the benefit? The benefit is that typically on a GSM style, um, when your cellular operator is your, your network carrier, and they use scratch cards too because they're 98% prepaid in those countries and cities that you mentioned, and they typically charge around 20 US cent a minute, believe it or not. It's actually cheaper than uh, Switzerland, but not by much. Uh, whereas a voice over IP call for us to call Nairobi, for instance, costs us about 1.2 cent. So we are 20, almost 20x cheaper. We'll offer it, of course, at a margin, but we'll offer it to the user at around 2 cent. So the, the, the upside for the user is always price. Nothing else matters to the user, only price. Really, it doesn't matter how blue, green, or yellow it is. Price, price, price. You're, in, you're dealing with people who $5, believe it or not, a $10 scratch card was from okay. our research is too high. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, um, sorry to be unpolite, but That's so. time is over. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, you, I, you received some paper stuff. I mean, there, was, there were these cards. Uh, keep them. There is a code on them. There you can get some free uh, stuff from the game. And you have these little, uh, these little papers where, you, where the... Where the audience can uh, vote for one of the projects. So the audience prize will be this one, <laughs> if it's different from the judge's uh, vote, which is this one. And um, yeah, let's see, uh, s s uh, our assistants will come and uh, fetch the, the small paper things you have. Please only give them one you <laughs> have. And so we know which project uh, you preferred. In the meantime, um, they will count the votes. And I have a surprise speaker, which is not a surprise anymore. It's Crypto Robbie. Um, he is going to speak a few words to us while we are counting the votes. Um, where is he? <laughs> yes. Oh. He's being installed still. Thank you, thank you. So, no, 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 no. Okay, hi folks. Okay. Um, my presentation is here. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, wonderful. And it's still possible with his B stick. So, good evening. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be here in Liechtenstein also to have, uh, to be used actually as a filler, gap filler for the counting period. So that's how they say. So actually I de I'm exactly the opposite of the speakers before. They have a time limit and Klaus asked me, oh, can you talk a little longer? And I said, okay, yes, no problem. With the, with the topic on blockchain, I can talk for hours. So, who am I? My name is Ravi Schwertner. I'm from Austria, Vienna. Sometimes I'm there, very rare these days. I, uh, I'm in this crypto space since four years now, and I actually entered it via the en uh, from the energy door, yeah, energy business. I managed a research fund in Austria, Smart Cities Fund, and uh, there we had to think about uh, energy blockchain. We had to um, make a call for proposals, for researchers, for companies, and that's how I entered. Yes, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Thank you. And with the time, I 
And I, I just jumped into it. There's so many of you in, uh, being enthusiastic about blockchain. I don't have to be here very, uh, very enthusiastic because anyway, everybody who came here has this feeling there is something we can change with blockchain. Um, I learned that they're cryptocurrencies, that they, they have uh, fluctuations. I, I lost, I won, I, I made my experience with cryptocurrencies. Um, but it's only part of the, the story, of course. What I do, I work now for ICOs, I help them, ICO Nanny or advisors called. I help startups, which I did also in, in research uh, in, the, in the, my, my time for the Austrian government. Also, I worked for high-tech consultancy companies. I worked in China. I worked in nanotechnical business and energy. I am come from this energy business. Um, what I do, I write for the Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Magazine. I uh, run my blog on LinkedIn. I have quite some followers. It's, now they call me influencer. I had to learn that I, maybe I, blockchain influencer. I, I can influence blockchain. So interesting. I, I think I cannot, but that's how they call me. Okay. I have to take that. And yes, where, where is this technology? Is it this? Doesn't matter. I can like this to like this. Okay. Um, what, what, um, why do conferences interest me, invite me to come to speak? Because I started, as I get so sick of this crypto greed and focus on cryptocurrencies, and I wanted to show there is more. There is blockchain applications and WordPress. You think, okay, yep, it is okay, uh-huh, yep, good. Um, so I, I was sick of this greedy masses of this, this trading focus on, because blockchain has a political mission and uh, we had uh, four lovely projects, yeah, very nice, very, very, all with good intentions. But Bitcoin, Bitcoin, even the Bitcoin blockchain had a political mission. And the political mission, and, and most of you know this, yeah, but it's just to remind ourselves that this is not just about technology. This is not just about uh, making a new app, a new currency. In the Bitcoin Genesis blog, there was this sentence uh, cited from the UK, the Times. Chancellor on brink of second bailout of banks. There was a criticism of the um, banking system 2009, 2008. So there was a clear political message. This system is wrong. This is sick. This financial system of 2008, 2009, financial crisis. And what we see, what I saw with blockchain and, and day trading and, and trading platforms and robot advisors for cryptocurrencies, we enter into the same direction. And I say this here in Liechtenstein, which is famous for banking. Lots of banks are here in Switzerland close by, where banking is, a, is important. Yes, it is important. We need that. But there is much more to discover. So it's just, um, and when we look at, I, I created this hashtag return on society. Let's have a look at projects which have a, which have a growth potential plus an added value to society. Because, and that's the reason, Facebook, Snapchat, Uber, Google, Yandex, and how they all call it, Alibaba, uh, they changed society. Facebook changed the way we make friends. We like them. Uh, we, um, Alibaba changed the way small and medium enterprises in China make business now. Yeah? They get support with artificial intelligence, even big blockchain centers now developed. Hangzhou, yeah, city of Hangzhou, 1.4 billion is invested by the Chinese government and jointly with Alibaba Group in blockchain development. There's nothing about cryptocurrency. So we see even in China, there is a change. So it's, it's about change. So when we look at blockchain projects, and we've seen three nice ones, what is the change and will it really be the big ones? Because with exponential technologies, and this I'm very clear, it's like the winner takes it all. You must be number one. Otherwise, you just will disappear. The winner takes 70%. The next one, two, number two and three, maybe uh, 15%, 10%. And the rest is just washed away. Yeah. That's, that's what I, I'm, I'm very clear about this. So if you stand here and present your project, be clear you want to be number one in what you do. And this is very important. This I miss in Europe. We can learn from the US. And in China, they also, in Asia, they, they have this. They have, they have this ability. 
to show to be big. Return on society, it's, it's not just about refugees programs or unbanking, um, banking the unbanked, yeah, it's, it's nice. I, by the way, I worked five years for, um, for an um, NGO, relief aid, yeah, I worked there in refugee camps in uh, those days in Russia, but also uh, in Africa. And I know the problems, and if you have a mobile phone problem, it's, it's not also, also only the money, it's the problem that they only have T, 2G there, and the, the, it's the, the size of the files transferred. Health-wise, the health data, what is done with them, yeah? And whether they need, I vote, I vote, uh, vote. yeah, there's lots of, lots of uh, bicycle stores, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But one has to look what is the need and how to, um, how to achieve uh, growth also in this region, because when we sit here with our nice cars outside, with our nice building and the smell of machine oil here in this hall, yeah, uh, we think we can save the world, but the world change is, the, the center of the world is somewhere else. We can just follow. We think we can change, we can just follow. And do we have still, do we have it? Uh, otherwise I destroy it. Uh? Okay, I will not, I, I will take care. It's, by the way, wonderful stones, yeah, wonderful gemstones. Um, what I try to find is blockchain projects which have an added value and a growth potential. I don't say they will become number one. Some of them I'm working with, some I just like. Um, it's just that we have different, and I want just to rush through a bit, through these projects. For instance, Sportico, it's a Slovenian UK project. It's young athletes um, get training and get funded by investors directly on blockchain. So it's, um, it's, it's supported by big sports guys. So where I, I see this potential because there you reach the masses. Here, we sit here. But Liechtenstein has even 25,000, how many? How many live here? 25,000 people? 38. Hmm? 38. 38. I've only got two. Okay. 38. Sorry, I make this so small. <laughs> um, 38. Here in this room, maybe 1%. And in Liechtenstein, anyway, there's more crypto going on than elsewhere. But we... What I see also, I, I tell the ICOs, please focus on the 99%. Get these people in. Yeah, get these people into your project. Not on the crypto, when, when I see these trade, crypto trading platforms, this is lost time. You must focus to get them in. And um, Sportico is one of these projects where I see some of this growth pot potential. I just have to fight with my microphone. Yeah, it's better. Um, Fan360, it's a fan platform. They have now around 130,000 active fans. It links fans with uh, their idols and they can share content. It's a, a project where you can reach the masses. I don't say it's perfect for blockchain, but we as crypto enthusiasts or crypto sometimes, even like BAAR, you know what that means? BAAR, blockchain as a religion. Yeah, we are here and I preach now and we, we think it's a religion. We sometimes believe so strong. I also come from AI side. I work with AI people. You don't have this. With blockchain, because there's cryptocurrency, I assume, um, behind it, this belief in hope that something, that, I don't know, maybe to get rich fast, yeah, to, to get rich fast is, the, is why it's such a craze. With artificial intelligence, in Vienna the Institute of Artificial Intelligence is 40 years old. The Institute of Crypto Economics has been founded this January. That's the difference also. 30, 40 years of difference in development. We're just at the beginning. So Fan360, another is a set pop dream, yeah? It's uh, derived from K-pop. It's an Asian, Japanese, Taiwanese, um, Korean project with large uh, producers at the uh, behind. I think these projects can reach the 99%. Again, I'm not convinced, first of all, Ethereum blockchain with transfer, so I'm sure this is the wrong blockchain <laughs> to use, yeah? Because with transactions we cannot use, but we will see blockchains where it will work. So uh, we, call, we talk about uh, different types of blockchains. They still, um, but it's a way to reach the masses. Um, 
And yeah, talking about different blockchains, I actually uh, work for, um, I support this Aaron blockchain, but I also support EOS since quite a while, uh, especially the arbitration system. So Aerum is a blockchain 3.0, um, EOS also, we have these next generation blockchains. But as we know from iPhone, iPhone 3, you remember this nice uh, aluminum style. So there is now iPhone 10. We will also see blockchain 10. So what we see now is just a very, very limited blockchain type. Uh, when I see smart contracts, when I hear smart contracts and you cannot change, they run and you cannot change. This is a problem. The three, uh, generation three, you can change uh, smart contracts. You need that. If you want to make a booking.com and you have unforeseeable, you must from the client side, uh, you must be able to change smart contracts. You must have a uh, bi-directional possibility to change smart contracts. And there is a technology, um, I work with the project, they have they uh, solved that problem. Also EOS tries uh, to solve that problem. NEM was mentioned today. I consider it a blockchain 2.0. They have a nice user, uh, good user experience, but in terms of transaction, they still have also some homework to do. We will see. And yeah, what I also find is interesting that we have um, financing of startups with cryptocurrency. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's a way we see in Germany, we see in, uh, in Switzerland, and this is the Austrian version, Conda, to finance others with crypto. It's more than we learn about blockchain. It's not that it's so necessary. We have wonderful venture capitalists out there. They have uh, decades of experience. Um, what they try, for instance, Conda is a crowdfunding platform in uh, Vienna, lots of experience, and they now find it, uh, try to use this, um, their token also for financing um, blockchain projects, ICOs. Um, an interesting project I like, like very much, and it's, it's very, uh, um, how to say, sometimes it leads to discussion, it's Islamic banking on blockchain. Yeah, Islamic banking, is a banking, a way of banking with no interest rate. In the Quran, they, it's, it's uh, the, uh, very clear stated, no interest rates to be paid. And this Malaysian-based project try to solve the problem on blockchain. It's the first ever uh, blockchain which has this Islamic Sharia uh, compliance. It's an interesting way. Islamic uh, social banking, Islamic banking is considered in the Arab world safe banking conservative banking, and that's actually what crypto new needs, because this, with these, with these uh, fluctuations, volatile markets, volatile currencies, such a project can also counterweight and can bring the Arab world closer to crypto market. It's because it's also cryptocurrencies are considered gambling in the Arab world, so it's a way to bring them in. It's nice, I like it. Uh, also the no interest rate approach is kind of something as a teenager even that I thought about, I like that. And they take me even more so. I, I support this, I'm Catholic uh, with Jewish ancestors, so I still can work for them. So they have some openness also. Um, Yuri Online, a Russian-Korean project. Um, Yuri Online is a project which is li also linked to my work for EOS. Um, the, they had, the young Russian uh, coders had the idea to bring more trust in, in ICOs, so they um, are a kind of escrow for ICOs. You put the, put the money there, uh, put the uh, your cryptocurrencies there, and then the ICOs get in stages funded according to their needs, according to the roadmap. So there was a topic, just, just now we heard, what are you doing with this money? Anyway, you're, you have an MVP or you have a running project, uh, product. Um, they are trying to bring some more trust into this system. Although it's a technology of trust, trust technology, still, we don't trust, yeah. We think, oh, they can run away with the money. They can run away with the ether. Yuri Online is kind of, they have registered around 12 ICOs now. I'm arbitrated there, kind of referee. Also in case there is dispute between investors and uh, the ICOs or the project owners. So what we see is not only that ICOs um, just print money, as they do, in form of cryptocurrencies, there is, and that was always my approach, we need also kind of referees, uh, an arbitration system. Like the, there's international arbitration courts, yeah, there, there, is, there is a legal system. But I think for blockchain, we need a different uh, approach too, a specific, a specific 
arbitration system. And for years, I also had to design, I criticized very much a year ago, this system because it wasn't clear whether they follow uh, the, the, the Anglo-American law system or case law or the European uh, mainland uh, system. It was very, now with years, they, this, this comes up and there are some, some cases already ongoing. Um, we, it's, it's, um, it does, it, it's important, especially with, uh, just imagine if you have a smart con contract running and you change it in between, then somebody could say, okay, I lost some money, I didn't get some money. And it's, this arbitration is controls the miner. It's a mining uh, super, uh, supervisory board, kind of board. And for years, the arbitration system can uh, make the block producers, as it's called there in, in years, can make them stop certain blocks, can, can freeze accounts and so on. So they have, this arbitration uh, system has power. And it's another interesting, and you see the very, very, very beginning, we are designing a new legal system, kind of. But it's nice. Huh? It's a, we, we, do, we don't only design central banks, yeah? Every ICO is a central bank. We design, uh, with all the problems, by the way, with inflation, and they are wondering why they why they have uh, high volatility in the currency. And the, the, I, I do also token economics, by the way, for projects. So why the, the coin loses so much value? Because there is no much business behind it that's necessary. And that, yeah, Avinoc, they uh, is a flight schedule platform. They want to um, improve the way of scheduling. So you uh, have lots of, especially the smaller airlines, they have the problem of empty miles, empty flights. And they try to, um, to fill that gap and have a direct book, booking uh, possibility. They invented also, new, they have their own blockchain running, not Ethereum, they do their own. And they have this, for instance, that the customer can also change a smart contract in that case. So there is a possibility to change smart contracts, which is, in my thinking, the 3.0, the true 3.0. Uh, the 4.0, I don't know what that blockchain looks like. But for the 3.0, I have some idea. Uh, GSC platform is in Toulouse based, that's a supply chain a platform also for aviation industry. It's just to, uh, it's one example there, hundreds of supply chain blockchains. Um, micro is micro jobs, this is a job platform, I will be a bit fast, I will just scroll through because uh, Solara is a photovoltaic. Um, blockchain, which very interesting aspect, SIM card on blockchain. There is a SIM card developed in Philippines, blockchainified, you can put much there. Five minutes. Five, five, mi five more minutes? If wow. you want, you can yeah, also go can shorter because hours. I know who has one. <laughs> okay, good. Um, five minutes. So, it's the, the cool uh, idea there is the SIM card. You add a SIM card on photovoltaic panel and have a certificate of origin of the electricity. So you can trace clear, because it's not clear where electricity sometimes comes from. Is it true green energy or is it still from coal uh, or uh, uh, power plants? So the point is with this uh, certificate of origin and you can also uh, use it as a control unit. That's what uh, Solara tries, an Australian Hong Kong project. And uh, I think we need some more energy projects. The energy projects I've seen since now, very weak, are not uh, meant to grow. And whether it's for society, I don't know. Yeah. At the moment, there is a lot to be done in the energy business. Um, yeah, what I do is also, I, I uh, have a, a group of um, tw around 20 people. We analyze coins, we, we do classical, it's an analyst job. Um, we also do OTC now, we, we develop, develop a standard, we have actually developed a standard for OTC uh, over the counter cryptocurrency trading. It's not that I'm so big involved, I'm more interested in this project evaluation side. I have also an ongoing contact, contract with the European Commission on project evaluations. I come from the evaluation side. Fundamental, um, fundamental data of projects, so the team, the business plan, the, the, the very good question, of course, always goes, where's the revenue? How is, the, how is value created? That's, and with this, um, I would also like to, to, to remind you, what's, uh, talking about ICO, yeah, I put this in, talking about ICO, what we will see is, folks, it's getting uh, rough. Yeah? The sea is rough. You know that it's very hard to, um, to, to um, raise funds for projects, very hard, very difficult, and we see that it's, it's getting less and less. 
and uh, you see a, there is a decrease. What I also see is what is interesting that in Europe most funds are raised, yeah, not in Asia. Um, I work a lot for Asian projects, but the most money comes, but that comes because, not because we are so clever <laughs> here in Europe, not because we are so intelligent, have more brain, it's because better regulation. We have better regulations, yeah, obviously. We, we, because China ICOs are forbidden, in Korea it's hard, in uh, Hong Kong it's possible, but difficult, you, you never know what, what China does. In Singapore it's possible, that's the hub. In Thailand it's hard, in Malaysia almost impossible, and so on. So it's possibly in, in, with Crypto Valley, with uh, Liechtenstein, I saw the 150 pages paper of the, um, there's a very strange German name for that, how is it called? Fer there's a new uh, law on ICOs and in blockchain. It's, yeah. Hmm? yeah, exactly. So they, they, there comes a new law very soon um, in Liechtenstein, which is nice. And so the regulation is important. Um, what I see trends, um, ICOs, of course, they will be regulated. Also in Asia, they will not continue to be forbidden. That is not, uh, funds for projects raised in 2018 are much less. So. 35 million, if I have 35 million, I say, wow, if you can achieve that, congratulations. If you raise two to three million or five million, mm, that's also good. <laughs> Did a great job already. Uh, depending, of course, on the, on the idea. Uh, funds come from private, bigger investors. That's what I see. It's not the institutions yet. They will come, for sure. It's not the community. Community financing is dead. This is dead. You cannot, you, you, can, you don't, don't spend money for marketing for the crypto community. It's a waste of money. If you spend half a million on marketing, it's waste. Maybe you can raise half a million if you're lucky. Maybe only 240. This changed completely. Um, uh, and quality of projects gets better. I come from this project evaluation side. Yeah? I see now better Projects, still white papers are sometimes very white to me, yeah? no intelligent word on it, just white paper, as it is. Um, but we're getting better, close to, when I see, you know, I, I evaluate research proposals. This is 100 pages with lots of literature, links and so on, well done, and then they ask for maybe 1 million euro uh, project, yeah? And then they have a contingency 10%. White paper, they ask for 3 million, have 35 million hard cap. What is this? We have 32 million wasted money. Yeah? This is crazy. How can you improve a software which you can do with three, three million? What is done with the rest? This is, we should be realistic. What's done with that money? And I talk about EOS. We, they, I mean, they, we raised 4.1 billion. And the money is now stored somewhere because the, anyway, the blockchain is running. Huh? It's, it's working at least. There are rumors always with problems and so So let's also think about where, as for investors also, um, what is a clever investment? What's really intelligent investment? It needs more brain still, also from institutional or large investors. And many ICOs cancelled. I work for a large uh, retailer. They have um, double digit billion turnover. Actually, I work for two large ones, one in Asia, one more in, in, in Europe, uh, US, but also Asia. And I look for projects, of course. They, they want to partner, they want to say, Robbie, find us some projects. So, okay, good. Um, Robbie? Now, when I, yes, I, yeah, my five minutes, it's, yeah, I will immediately stop. Uh, just this, uh, this uh, idea to, at the end. I see a lot of projects canceled. I see a lot of projects dead. Yeah? I look, I, when I have my list from, uh, from summer and look now, the homepage is to, uh, for sale. Yeah? So I see a lot of ICOs dying. That's a fact, and that we will see it will just a very, very deadly year. Um, next year, we'll see a lot of projects die. That's my message is uh, just to give you an know, idea how the situation in Austria is. We have 300,000 enterprises in Austria, companies. We have 105 organizations being involved uh, on the Austrian blockchain landscape. Uh, this landscape I did together with some AI friends. We do business intelligence also with uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, support. This was not artificial intelligence. I started an Excel sheet in 2016 on who is doing what in Austria. And this is the result. Now we, we update a bit. Uh, it's done by somebody called Crypto Robbie and the uh, Enlight AI. Um, you see it's 100. So it's still at the very beginning. We want to reach the 330,000. 
Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, it, just for Austria. And in uh, Switzerland, it's similar. Um, and uh, Liechtenstein is a bit better with this. It's claimed here that 400 enterprises are here, at least have an address here. Good. Um, I, I, yes, I, I mentioned I write for Wall Street uh, online. I have my own blog, CryptoRobby.blog. Yeah, why CryptoRobby? CryptoRobby, I, I wrote on the pseudonym many years. And so that's why kind of, yeah. I, how I used it now, it's now I let it uh, have it registered, it's a EU brand. And for the ICOs, yes, I heard good ideas, there's some homework to be done in presentation and I actually hate this Germany's or Austria's next uh, top model style of pitching, yeah, this competition, uh, who is best, I'm not sure because one should uh, compare sometimes uh, health project with health projects and, and uh, security project with security. So be nice to the, the guys who presented here, it's hard here to stand here and do a good speech, I know what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, now it's getting uh, exciting. If someone has a question to him, uh, maybe... No? No. Okay then. Everybody wants That's to very good. Besides me too. Yeah. Anyone has a question to me? <laughs> I think it's only one question now. Um, who has won the, the pitches? Um, it's been extremely tight, so none of the projects should be said that they were worse than the others. We had one vote deciding um, from the judges um, who is the best uh, project, and the third project is uh, just one more vote behind. <laughs> so it's very tight, so don't be, don't be sad if you're not the one who has won. Um, yeah. And there is also, um, luckily there is a, a different project which has won the, the small PG. Okay, then, um, how shall I say it? Uh, the winner is, and um, it's Hit Foundation. It's the judges, it's the, it, 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 and I, I, I can stress this again, it was, it was so tight. Um, um, let me give you the, the, the big pitchy. Um, maybe the other projects come quickly up. I will then uh, also give the, the second one, or I, I, I do it now. Um, the audience vote, vote was a bit clearer, and that's for Talkit. Please. Um, <laughs> And so, but the third project, please come up as well. It's, well, 